Hey, Village Church, what's going on? We are back with another devotional here in the book of Deuteronomy. So let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 9. We'll jump in here. Um, <clears throat> for some context, let me just tell you that Moses is doing a big kind of recap here, as he has been the last several weeks. He's been talking about the things that have happened the last 40 years, uh, as now the people of Israel are getting ready to go in and go into the promised land. They're ready, they're ready to go in, to go in. Um, they're getting ready to uh, to go take the promised land. So Moses is uh, giving him a little speech here. He's talking about some stuff in chapter 9. Let's read and see what Moses is saying. Hear, O Israel, you are now about to cross the Jordan and go in and dispossess nations greater and stronger than you, with large cities that have walls up to the sky. The people are strong and tall, Anakites. You know about them, and you have heard it said, Who can stand up against the Anakites? But be assured today that the Lord your God is the one who goes across ahead of you like a devouring fire. He will destroy them. He will subdue them before you. <clears throat> and you will drive them out and annihilate them quickly, as the Lord has promised you. <clears throat> Excuse me. So um, they're about to go in and face these big, tall people big giants and, uh, and scary, scary people and uh, with a reputation of being terrible. And Moses is saying, listen, God is the one who's going to go and wipe these people out. You're just going to go in and take the land. It's not going to be you that does it. It's going to be God. <clears throat> Verse 4, after the Lord your God has driven them out before you, do not say to yourself, the Lord has brought me here to take possession of this land because of my righteousness. No, it is on account of the wickedness of these nations that the Lord is going to drive them out before you. It is not because of your righteousness or your integrity that you are going in to take possession of the land, but on account of the wickedness of these nations. The Lord your God will drive them out before you to accomplish what he swore to your forefathers, to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Understand then that it is not that it is not because of your righteousness that the Lord is giving you this good land to possess, for you are a stiff-necked people. <clears throat> well, um, I love this uh, passage because Moses is just giving it straight to the Israelites, saying God is going to go do something, and when you get in and reap the benefits of what God does, don't fool yourself into thinking it's because of what you did that made this great thing happen. It's because of what God did. The end, period. You are terrible. God is great. That's what it is. Uh, it is not because of your righteousness or your integrity. It's not because you are good. It's not because you are strong. It's not because you're a better army or you're faster or whatever. It's because of what God did. It's because of what he is choosing to do. In fact, no, Moses takes the next like, whole rest of this chapter to tell them all the bad stuff that has happened, to remind the Israel of all the terrible things that they have done. <clears throat> the golden calf, the rebellion against the Lord in Numbers 14 that we've talked about many times. He, he just goes on and he says, listen, you, we are a terrible, horrible, desperate people that need God. We're not great. God is great. He's the one who's doing this. He's the one who's giving us the land. When you get there, Remember that. Do not be led astray into thinking that your righteousness or your integrity earned it because it didn't. It was all God. It was his choice. Um, and he's used this word, this phrase, you are stiff-necked people. This is a very interesting phrase. It's used a few times in the Old Testament. And it stiff-necked, you know, if your neck is stiff, what, you know, I, I have kind of a stiff neck, actually. Um, I got some neck problems. It's very hard for me to turn my head without turning my shoulders. Like if I go and look at something, I usually turn my whole torso, <laughs> you know, to the right or to the left. Um, I don't often just turn my neck. That is uncomfortable for me. And if I turn this way, same. It's just like kind of stiff would be the best. In fact, you see me holding my my shoulders because I, it's uncomfortable. Um, so I understand what being stiff-necked is. And <clears throat> it means that, that uh, you can't turn easily, right? It means that you're not very flexible. It also can be like 
uh, in reference to an animal that uh, like, an, like an ox or a, a horse that you might ride. And, and you know, if you're um, controlling a horse with a bit in its mouth, you know, if you're trying to turn the animal, you might tug a little bit to the right or to the left to turn to the left or turn to the right. And if you do that, um, sometimes the animal's head would turn and then as the head turns, so goes the body. Uh, and Moses is saying, you're stiff-necked. Even if I, you know, the Lord is tugging on you to turn you, you don't turn. You don't change. Uh, so let's skip the rest of chapter 9 and the beating that Moses gives them. We'll, we'll go over to uh, chapter 10. <clears throat> we'll actually go all the way to chapter 10, verse 12. Uh, Moses also recounts the, the fact that he went up to the, the mount, got the tablets, came down, and was so angry that he broke them. But let's go to verse 12 of chapter 10. And now, O Israel, what does the Lord your God ask of you but to fear the Lord your God, to walk in all his ways, to love him, to serve the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul? and to observe the Lord's commands and decrees that I am giving you today for your own good. So what does the Lord ask? Well, to fear him, to walk in his ways, to love him, to serve him with all your heart and all your soul and to observe the, com the Lord's commands for your own good, he says. Verse 14, to the Lord your God belong the heavens, even the highest heavens, the earth and everything in it, Yet the Lord set his affection on your forefathers and loved them, and he chose you, their descendants, above all the nations, above everyone else in the world, um, as it is today. Verse 16, circumcise your hearts, therefore, and do not be stiff-necked any longer. For the Lord your God is God of gods and the Lord of lords, the great God, mighty and awesome, who shows no partiality and accepts no bribes. So Moses is saying, circumcise your hearts. What an interesting phrase, circumcise your hearts. Which you might be able to say, <clears throat> dedicate your heart to the Lord or completely give your heart over to God. Uh, you could also maybe say something like, uh, commit your heart to the Lord or show, you know, give, give it. Because what was circumcision but the way that the, the Jewish people, the Israelites, showed the, the, there's a sign of the covenant of Abraham that God made with Abraham, right? So it was how they showed, I am an Israelite. I am one of the people that follows God, uh, that worships Yahweh. I am one of these. And so so Moses here is saying, circumcise your hearts. So uh, completely give your whole heart to Jesus. Not Jesus in the Old Testament, I'm sorry. To God. <laughs> we, we say that all the time. Give your heart to Jesus. Uh, but but you know, commit your ways to the Lord. Uh, therefore, and do not be stiff-necked any longer. So allow yourself to be flexible. Allow yourself to be turnable. Allow God to change you. Allow the Lord to. So this is important. This is so important for us that we allow God to change us. And with actual real changes, not just things that we think about and change and like, oh yeah, I, I should I should maybe do that or I'll, maybe I'll think about that. But allow God to change our lives. This is so important. Do not be stiff-necked. Let God turn you. Maybe God is leading you in a new direction and you're, and you're resisting and going, eh, no, I want to stay in my old direction. And God is saying, no, let's go this way. Let's go that way. Let's go into a new place or a new area of ministry or let's uh, do this or join the choir or help out with the youth group or the children's ministry or whatever else. And you're just saying, no, 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 no. Man, that's being stiff-necked because you want to stay in your lane. But God's saying, go to the right, go to the left, turn, move. Let me mold you and shape you. And Moses is saying right here, thousands of years ago, he's saying, yes, give your heart to God and don't be stiff-necked. Allow God to make real changes in your life, even if it's scary. Okay, this next part's amazing. Here it comes. Verse 18. 
So verse 17, actually, look, the Lord is the, the, the great high God. He's the God of gods, Lord of lords. He's awesome. Uh, verse 18, he defends the cause of the fatherless and the widow and loves the alien, giving them food and clothing. And you are to love those who are aliens. For you yourselves were aliens in Egypt. Fear the Lord God and serve him. Hold fast to him and take your oaths in his name. He is your praise. He is your God who performed for you those great and awesome wonders you saw with your own eyes. Your forefathers who went down into Egypt were 70 in all. And now the Lord your God has made you as numerous as the stars in the sky. Pretty cool. Let me back up to verse 18 though because this is a, this is a killer. God defends the cause of the fatherless and the widow. Now, what did James talk about in the New Testament? You know, to uh, it was the same thing. You know, care for the widows and orphans, um, and loves the alien. God loves the alien, the person who's not from around here, who's coming in from the outside, who who doesn't belong, who's not part of your family, the, the new guy in church, or the new person in, in choir, or the new uh, volunteer for your ministry. Hey, God loves that person. Uh, God also loves the, the, the aliens that come into our country. It's a big can of worms there to open. Uh, <laughs> but I, I can't tell you the number of people that I've met that are so uh, vehement, vehemently opposed to the idea of immigration that any new person that comes into our country, state, county, land, anywhere becomes their enemy in their mind. And God is saying, Moses says right here, God loves the alien. God loves the stranger. He loves the person that comes in from a foreign land. In fact, he doesn't just love them. He gives them food and clothing. Straight up here in the scripture, it says, he loves the alien, giving them food and clothing, providing for them. God loves the alien and the outcast and the stranger so much that he gives what he has for that person. I can't tell you the number of church people that I've met who say things like, kick them out, get them out of here, get these people back to their own country. But I read the Bible and it says, love the alien. In fact, give the alien food and clothing. Give the immigrant supplies. It's right here in the Bible. I don't know why we are against the things that God, that God loves. Why do we as Christians uh, formulate these opinions that go against what the Bible says and adopt them and spread them around to everybody else? And it's, and it's not biblical. This kind of stuff blows my mind. And there's a big rabbit trail we could go down upon how, uh, you know, how the enemy has just deceived Christians into believing things that are not biblical. But I think we'll avoid that big long rabbit trail for today and really focus in here on what God is saying in scripture. Because if we believe the Bible, if we believe what it says and that it's supposed to change us and that it's supposed to speak to us and that God through his Holy Spirit can say things to us and, and, and we're not gonna be stiff-necked then let me say to you today that God defends the cause of the fatherless and the widow and loves the alien, giving him food and clothing. And verse 19, and you are to love those who are aliens. So it's not just that God loves them. You are supposed to love them too. This is word for word what it says in my Bible. You are to love those who are aliens. For you yourselves were aliens in Egypt. Fear the Lord your God and serve him. Wow. So 
I just, there's, there's not, there's a lot in the Bible that isn't clear. There's a lot of things in the Bible that are left open to interpretation. I just don't think this is one of them. I don't think this could be any less clear. This is super clear to me. I'm just going to leave that there for today. And I pray that you will not be a stiff-necked person. And upon hearing this or shutting it off because Daniel's crazy and has gone off the deep end, um, that you might allow God to maybe turn your ideas, to maybe shape you and mold you today. To maybe help you see that alien person and love them. And supply them with food and clothing. To bring that stranger in to your family. There's a powerful word here from the Lord. Let's pray. Jesus, I pray that we would not uh, turn our hearts and minds away from this clear instruction from your word, God, that we would take it in, that we would heed your word, that we would listen to what you have to say and allow you to change us and mold us, that we would not be stiff-necked into our old routines, or but that we would allow you to lead us to love the alien to supply them with food and clothing, to care for the widow and the outcast, Lord, because you did and you command us to. Help us, Lord, change our hearts and our minds today uh, and lead us as you would. In your name I pray, amen. Have a good week. We'll see you next week.